As we have discussed previously, one of the greatest inconsistencies in the entire Apollo record is exactly how high an astronaut can jump on the moon. A brilliant example comes from Apollo 16, in which the command pilot, John Young, jumps to salute the American flag. This event was captured by both the rover's television camera and on Charlie Duke's Hasselblad still camera. Hey, John, this is perfect with the limb and the rover and you and, and uh, Stone Mountain and the old flag. Come on out here and give me a salute. Big Navy salute. Off the ground, one more. There we go. Yes. As Ralph Rene wrote in his book, John Young has leaped about 18 inches in the air. We all know that white men can't jump, but this is ridiculous. Under the moon's 1-6 gravity, his weight, suit included, was only 65 pounds. I am crippled and weigh over 200 pounds, but I can jump 4 inches high. On the moon, this would be over 2 feet. You would think that youthful, physically fit astronauts with the right stuff could jump higher than this. Proper guests, such as Phil Plate and Gavin Stone, will generally argue that the heavy life-supporting backpacks held the astronauts down to the lunar surface, thus preventing them from jumping any higher than they would on Earth. Yeah. Well, not only that, they're not even leaving the surface of the, of, of the moon more than like a few inches. Yeah. They're, they were wearing these big heavy spacesuits in the backpack. Right. They tried doing some jumps and they kept falling down. And the problem is the spacesuit has this big, this big uh, backpack on it, which makes them really off balance. And they kept falling trying to do normal stuff. It was really hard for them to do stuff. This claim has been debunked by the existence of video footage taken during the same mission in which both astronauts are suddenly able to jump several feet above the ground. Of course, whenever astronauts made such huge leaps, there was always something partially and conveniently obscuring the view. Yeah, jump flat footed straight in the air. 300, about four feet. Wow! Charlie, that ain't any fun, is it? That ain't very, that ain't very smart. Well, about four feet. But there is another contradictory factor to the heavy backpacks claim. Back in the early 1960s, when the Apollo project was well underway, NASA scientists at the Langley Research Center developed a method of training astronauts for walking on the moon. It involved suspending astronauts sideways via wires to relieve them of their weight, and thus simulate the moon's one-sixth gravity conditions. On New Year's Day, 1963, NASA scientists Donald E. Hughes and Amos A. Spady Jr. released a document entitled A Technique for Simulating Conditions of Walking and Performing Other Self-Locomotive Activities on the Lunar Terrain. The information within this document is so devastating to the Apollo claims, and yet it is freely available for download on NASA's website. On pages 8 and 9 of this document, Hughes and Spady write this about vertical jumping. Measurements were made to determine the maximum vertical heights to which the test subjects, carrying no load, could jump under the influence of both Earth's gravity and the simulated lunar gravity. Most of the jumping tests were made with three test subjects who generally were wearing street clothes and shoes. 
One of these three subjects was of medium height and husky build. The second was of tall and heavy build, and the third was tall and of light build. During these tests, accelerometers were strapped to the subject to record the vertical accelerations generated by each subject who was asked to perform a series of standing height jumps of increasing heights up to that obtained by maximum exertion. A movable target set at various given heights above normal standing eye level was used as a height reference and the subject jumped so as to bring a target to eye level. These tests provided a qualitative indication of the subject's ability to judge and control his jump. For the tests of jumping under earth gravity condition, average maximum heights of 20 to 22 inches were obtained. To achieve these heights, the subjects generally jumped from a crouched position giving a propelling stroke, that is, the vertical movement of the upper part of the body prior to the time the feet leave the floor of about 12 inches. Average maximum heights of 8 to 9 feet were obtained for the lunar gravity condition simulated with the existing equipment. Application of height corrections to account for the gravity gradient produced by the test equipment showed that heights of 12 to 14 feet could be achieved under a condition of constant lunar gravity. A few jumps were made by one of the subjects with a loaded backpack. And although no measurements were taken, the subject's capability was not noticeably impaired by this additional load. To simplify what Hughes and Spady have told us, NASA's own experiments proved that even with a fully loaded portable life support system, an astronaut could freely jump as high as 14 feet. So clearly, the claim that heavy backpacks were preventing astronauts from jumping high is false. Going with what the experiments of the Langley Research Center had proved, where are the videos of astronauts actually jumping 14 feet whilst out on the surface of the moon? Okay, Bob, I've got my In the hours upon hours of videos, the astronauts never jumped remotely this high unless there was something partially blocking the view. The results of NASA's simulations, together with NASA's EVA videos, offer perhaps some of the strongest photographic material suggesting that these videos were not filmed where NASA said they were filmed. We know that the highest the test subjects were able to get under Earth's gravity was 20 to 22 inches above the ground. If we look back to John Young's jump salute, you'll notice that he is only able to jump as high as knee level. Knee level is typically in the vicinity of 20 inches above the ground. This means that John Young is getting no higher than the test subjects could jump under 1G. Because the moon's 1 6 gravity would have allowed the astronauts to freely jump as high as 14 feet, the best way to achieve this result is to shoot in a 1G environment. But where would NASA find the nearest 1G environment to shoot these videos? The answer is right here on planet Earth. Oh yeah, what's that I hear you ask? Why is John Young still falling slowly, even when sped up by 33%? It's quite simple. Wire sports and or helium balloons usually do the trick.
these videos and historical documents emphasize with great certainty that the one small step for man was no giant leap for mankind.